Hello, Booktube. Hello, everybody. Uh, so this evening we're going to be doing a, uh, uh, well, it's a, a kind book, of a review. It's a combination book review and uh, and recommendation. Recommendation for book we've read books we've read recently. Yeah, we're um, we're gonna review the same book that that we we, we that we read together in a buddy read. Yep, in a buddy read with a, with a bunch of other people. We'll tell you about when we get started, and we're gonna. At the end, recommend a book that we have read this month that we really loved and think think some of you might like. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cool. Yeah. My eyes are really not red. I promise. It's the uh, lighting in here is crap. It's the hoot. You know it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I, I haven't taken a drink of anything in months. The dimmest lights in all the world. Yeah, they're, I, I they're don't terrible. Know. Becky's okay because she's just just right in the path of the lights, and I'm off to the side, so sucks. Let me, let me try something though. See if this helps. Well, if I can reach the damn thing, I can't. I guess. Oh, here we go. I guess that'll work. I kind of look like the crypt keeper now. No, you don't. Just a little bit. Not at all. Just looked like that before right, you. And I'll turn it off. Now, if you like it, leave it. I no. don't care. <laughs> I'll, I'll just look <coughs> red. Just turn the light on. No, I'm good. <gasps> All right, so let's get started. Well, we're not cutting that out, so I don't. We don't. We don't edit. We will never. We'll probably never edit. I, will, I really would like to do thumbnails and stuff, but. Probably isn't going to happen. Just take what we get. Because because <laughs> I am so terrible at editing that it, it's just ridiculous let me get this to the cover of the book that we're going to talk about and he's really not terrible at editing editing it's just it's just a big hassle it is a hassle so and nobody cares. here's the book we read together it's the chrysalids uh what the hell oh i'm i'm hitting buttons i forget i forget this has page turn buttons my Kindle doesn't have it, <laughs> but it's the Chrysalids by John Wyndham. This Wait. is the uh, science fiction masterworks. It's on my Nook. Um, but yeah, this is the science science fiction masterworks edition. And I I, I love these F SF masterworks. They're so cool. It's got a great introduction. Um, very very cool edition of this book. So yeah, I like it a lot. It was a, it was just over two hundred pages. Yeah, two hundred twenty pages or so. Yeah, something like that. I think one of the dogs barked it. <laughs> I think it was Link. He came over here, left it, and then left. Man, these dogs are rank, <laughs> and and we're locked in here with them. So. This is a small room. <laughs> yeah. All right. God. <laughs> All right. So you you want you want to get started? Yeah. The You're Christmas. better at synopsizing mm -hmm. things than I am. I'll give you a slight. Oh, and Synopsis we read this because, with Brandy? Yeah, we read Brandy and Brian M. R. Um, uh, we read it with uh, oh, so Dave. Dave yeah. from Book, Book Blather. Yeah. It, was that it? Hold on. Well, hold on. We're going to look. I, we, we cannot remember um, I actually had, who, all, to have who all we read open. this with. Yep. This, is how, this is how good we are at this. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it, okay. Dave from uh, Dave and Olive. Don't forget Olive. Oh, yeah, Dave and Olive. Oh, yeah, Olive read it, too. I always forget. Yeah. I, sometimes I wonder if Dave actually it's read it, and maybe, maybe it was Olive instead. Maybe it was totally Olive. Yeah. Dave yeah, I mean, if, if, it, if it's typed, you have to wonder if it's Dave or Olive. So, you never know. I want to start throwing things at him. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Sorry, I digress hard. Hard. Uh, the Chris, I, I'm going to give you a slight synopsis because giving you any kind of an in-depth synopsis gives everything away. It gives a lot of stuff away. Yeah, I but, mean that you may not get till six chapters in. He won't even let me tell you why it's called the Chrysalis. Mm -mm. He's just a spoiler. Yeah. Um, so the book takes place. I'm. Is it the, 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 the time setting is okay, right? Because you can kind of figure it out in the first two chapters. Yeah, that's fine. So the book takes place sort of in the far future. And it's, so I guess it's, 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 it's a post-apocalyptic sort of dystopian future. Yeah. Um, and it follows the, the, just the, the, the raising of this boy, David, into 
a, a man. Um, and it's he, David's grow, is growing up in a commune of sorts um, that is very, very focused on normality. Anything that they find that is any sort of a mutation up to and including crops, animals, and people is exercised from the commune. Yeah, they're exiled. Yeah, they're well, they're seemingly exiled. They're, uh, I, there's some controversy about that too, but yeah, because it, it actually was left open a little bit. But. Yeah, it was, <laughs> but normality is it's revered it's normality worshiped. is considered godlike and mm -hmm. yeah and it's worshiped yeah um and and any anything at all abnormal what what abnormal that they would consider abnormal is it is blasphemy mhm mm and the people in this commune are are taught you turn in anything that you find slightly off Including people, if you see someone who's even if it's your fellow, you know, communist, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you, you turn them in. And in the very first chapter, on the very first page, this young boy David meets a little girl with six toes, and that starts a long cascade of of horrible things that happen in this young boy's life. And he he, he befriends Sophie. Yeah, That's Sophie's a little Sophie. girl with six toes. He befriends her and helps her. Um, but there's a, I care, I, oh, I wish I'd looked before we started this. Um, one of the doctrines of this co commune, and it's, it is very religious, of this religious commune is um, that mutants are evil. Just, that's paraphrasing. But. It's it goes on from there and things just gradually get worse and worse and we discover things about David that put him in grave danger and it it follows it follows the life of David as he grows up and has to take his own future into his own hands because it's it's gotten too dangerous for him in this commune and that's the brief very brief synopsis um, the commune is very very encapsulated. And there are uh, uh, so supposedly other groups outside of the commune, and, and there there's the outlands where all the bad people, I say bad people, are sent when they they find that um, they're not godly. So yeah, that's that's your that's your brief synopsis, and it's it's a fantastic book. Yeah, it has. It really is. Uh, but one of the things one of the things that that you do understand within the first few chapters is. The book's got 17 chapters, probably the fifth chapter, maybe the fourth chapter. You, you do understand that uh, there is a little bit of ESP going on with these people. They do, um, you know what, I'm putting my glasses on. I'm having trouble seeing but my that's, paper here. That's who, that's, that's, that's what puts David in, in desperate danger. ESP in this place, in this world or amongst these people anyway it's bad yeah i mean it's if, a mutation if, if it's, anybody it's, were to find out about this they would be they'd be exiled at, at, the, very the, at least, the very least exiled so we'll we'll leave it at that with um with that part of it we're not going to go into that too much mm -hmm. right because then then you, you start getting into spoiler territory and more characters are introduced and and i think for a book that is that is uh, this short. Okay. Um, the characters are well done, and the characters are pretty fleshed out. I mean, I'm just really surprised. I'm just really surprised at how well the characters are fleshed out in this book, <laughs> considering it's this short. Now, now it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, but but it's not that this is a perfect book because it absolutely is not. This book does have some issues. Um, uh, including and especially the last chapter. I, I found the last chapter terrible. I didn't have a problem with the last chapter. Um, well, no, that's not true. I had a different problem with the last Be chapter. Becky had, had a different problem with the last chapter in that it was slightly um, nihilistic, maybe. Maybe that's not the right word. 
It was it was right. unsteady. Yeah, it, le it left you on a very very unsteady footing. But yeah, it, it did. We uh, had, but, we had but it was we also had very separate problems with the last chapter yeah. for some very separate reasons. My my problem with the last chapter is that everything was wrapped up uh, by someone talking. Um, and while I'm okay with that in an Agatha Christie book, you know, and but I'm not okay with that tying up so much of the book and of the world that it's done in one chapter. He feels like a lot of the book, a, a lot of the book was tied up in a, na a nice, neat little bow in that last chapter. Now I'm good. I'm good with ambiguity. If you're going to wrap it up that way, I would rather it be more ambiguous and um, a little less tied up and, and, and a little less wrapped up than to have it just um, just talk. You know, to have it talk to talk through like that you know instead of someone just standing there telling you how, how the world is you know what it felt like to me what have you ever seen a, a rope when it's frayed on the edge and the way you fix it or to keep it from from fraying anymore is you just tie a knot in it so you still have all those frayed edges but you had that knot there holding things together that's how it felt to me it felt like yeah it was it was sort of sealed up at the end but you have all this uncertain stuff just sort of sticking out of the ends. I guess but it kind of it, it, it kind of bothered me. Yeah, I guess, but um, it it, but, it it was almost a soliloquy, and I don't and I don't feel the soliloquy was earned. Um, well, in in this book, I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like it was earned at all. Especially considering it was a character that you you just met. Yes, a character you just met. Um, Maybe that's why a it, character it we so, knew absolutely so. nothing about. Um, I would, like I said, I'd rather have it ambiguous or have it 100 pages longer. So I would, then, then, then to have the way it was wrapped up. I gave it four stars. The first 16 chapters of this book, I loved. I like pretty bows. Yeah. It's a four star read for me. Yeah, I, me too. I mean, even even, even the, way, the way it left it. But remember guys, I read books for the storyline. Just almost 100, well, 95% for the storyline. If 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 the writing is just absolutely atrocious, that'll that'll mess me up. But I I read for the storyline. So this book, the writing was not atrocious in this book, though. No, it was beautiful. It was fantastic in written. a lot of places. Um, mm -hmm. but but the ending seemed rushed to me, and yeah. I, and I have a problem with that now. There are a lot of classic science fiction books that are like this. Brian, Mr. and I had this this conversation. A lot of classic science fiction works are like this. Um, where, you know, I've read comic books that are written almost exactly the way, the way that that character was talking. Mm -hmm. And again, in com in a comic book, I, I feel it's earned. Comic books, comic books are melodrama. You know, yeah, it's a good word for it. Yeah, it melodrama. was a, it was a very, it was moments. a very melodramatic ending that I had a problem with. But I still highly recommend this book to science fiction fans. Yeah, there were some there were some characters in the in this book who practically spoke in poetry. Mm -hmm. Like Uncle Axel, he he had some amazing lines in this book. He did. You know, you know, he reminded me of just a little bit was uh, the dad in uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Yeah. Yeah, but just, <laughs> just a little. Um. um I mean, John Wyndham, I don't think, is as good a writer as Ray Bradbury. But I think John Wyndham is a very good writer, and I thought he wrote Uncle Axel probably as well as any character in the book, maybe better. I, I, have, the, I have the same impression of Uncle Axel as I do the dad from um, Something Wicked This yeah. Way Comes. Kind of he a was badass. Kind of, no, he was, yeah, but he was kind of the book's um, shark-hunting um, shark old man who, who speaks in... Um, creepy main stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's just full of sound and fury and he's he's just uh const constantly um rhapsodizing and I, I oh i actually loved when he came on the screen he he was a badass he was awesome he was that character was so so yeah i mean who who would you recommend it to i, I would recommend it to science fiction fans but i would also recommend it to people who are just curious about science fiction 
because it is not science fiction heavy. No, but it's a good. It it it. it is a good showing of science fiction. It is. So it's a it's a it's a good science fiction story. It is a proper science fiction novel. Mm -hmm. But um, it's and it is based on a based on an, uh, an idea. Yeah, and, and a very great idea. I really enjoyed this. I mean, this was ni what nineteen fifty that this was written. <clears throat> so quite ahead of its time. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not that this was the first dystopian, you know, post apocalyptic novel because it's not not even close. But, I mean, when he added the ESP to this, and he added the, you know, the, the mind powers and all that kind of stuff, and it was very cool. Um, very, very well done. Um, and a lot of people are really going to like this ending. I just didn't. Well, there was, there was some really glorious Im imagery in this. There, there, there were scenes where they were talking about huge fields of black glass. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. wastelands. They're, they're very painfully, obviously, from bombs being dropped. And it was wonderful to read. And that, that really really added to the, the uh, sci-fi dystopian future uh, feel to it. Um, you know, the, I think the, the only problem I had with this book was the, the that one woman who, who was the soliloquy woman at yeah. the end. That, I wasn't a big fan of hers, but I, I'd still recommend this book. It's still a very, very good book, Me and too. it's very good for uh, beginners' um, science fiction. It is, yeah, very good. Yeah, I mean, if you've never read science fiction and you want to read science fiction, I, you know, especially classic science fiction, I'd say The Chrysalis is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. I say Day of the Triffids is a good place to start. Um, even Ender's Game is a really good place to start if you want to start with something slightly newer. Um, Ender's Game is very good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of some others, but th those are the first three that I would that I would say are are um, you know are for really good science good fiction starters. Start. Yeah, I would I would also recommend uh, Waystation. Yeah, Waystation. By Clifford D. Simic. Yeah, that's a um, great book. That's a great place to start. Yeah, uh, but again, I think it's a lot because a lot because um, the chrys the chrysalids is based. Well, it's based. It's very heavily revolves around humanity. It doesn't revolve around. It it doesn't. It it doesn't have that laser focus focus on the science. It has the mm -hmm. the more the focus on the on the people and the humanity. Well, in the basically. world, there the, there is yeah. a lot. Of, there is a lot of focus on the on on the macro world or or the, or the micro world. Yeah, it, there it is. But again, it's it's culture based. Yeah. And Extremely then, culture based, and then it just kind of spread. It kind of spreads to the macro world as mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting. It's good. It's a four star read for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I couldn't agree more. All right. So what what is a book you recommend that that you read this month? So far, I'm going. I'm I'm sticking with science fiction, but I'm sorry, it's a science fiction romance. You just have to get over it. <laughs> um, that is awfully dark. I know, but it's the only thing you're. Darn phone will pick up. I know. So this is, uh, it's called The Bride Program by, uh, Dane Griggs. Eh, Griggs, I am so sorry, Dane Griggs. It's called The Bride Program by Dane Griggs. Um. Is that a, a, a woman writer or? It's a, I believe it's a woman. If I remember correctly, I looked it up and it was a woman. Okay. If, I, if it's not, I'm so sorry, Dane. Um, but it's, it's sort of a lot of sci-fi romance books are based on this idea that um, uh, an alien race has come to Earth because, like, Earth is one of the the few, uh, the home of, of one of the few species of, of people in the universe that are compatible with this race. Um, compatible for uh, baby-making purposes, you know how romances are. Um, and what's fun about this is the, the, the alien race, they're called the Serastians, and they make a, a, a deal with Earth, that they create this bride program. And it's the idea that if the women of Earth are, are, are open to trying to have relationships with these males, the ma the the the, uh, the alien race will give them medical technology that will well it'll basically cure cancer oh, okay. and the really really major illnesses. And what I liked about this series is the women just have to be open to trying. They're they're not kidnapping women women from Earth and making them, um, which happens a lot. Be open, in this, which happens a in, lot in this genre. 
and it drives me crazy. But in this case, it's very, very sweet, very cozy. They're, the women are, they're given, um, given the option to join the program and they have their pick. Yeah. And I love it. The first book is a little rocky. And I only, this is the first book. And I only recommend it because the rest of the series is fantastic. But the first book, it's 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 a, it's a little rocky. You can see the uh, the the uh, you can feel the author get, getting a feel for the the world and the culture. Yeah. After that, it's smooth sailing and they're you'll all wonderful. That, you'll see that a lot, especially with uh, mm -hmm. with independently published books. Yeah, you'll mm -hmm. see that quite a bit. Um, you'll see an author getting their footing as they go. In, yeah. In, in a world, I don't read as many series as Becky does. Becky reads about 90% series, probably. This series so far, I think, is like eight or nine books. I read it in a week. Because I read like a book a day. Because it was, By the third book, I wasn't reading the synopses anymore. I was just like, book three, here we go. Let's go. Yeah. Because uh, I love the series. I really do. It's fantastic. It's cool. loads of fun. What, what is it called, the series? The, what do you got to ask hard questions for? I don't even know. <laughs> I, hold on. It's called Saving Serasti. How do you spell Serasti? C E R A S T E. Dane Griggs is the author. This is Dane Griggs. Are you? Oh yeah, she is. She is a. She is a female author. Okay. Cool. She has two bratty long-haired dachshunds. I like her. Yeah, me too. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, that was that. That's my recommendation for this this week. Cause I love that series. It's so much fun. It's it's good for um. But it's anybody, pretty cozy. Yeah, it's it's very very sweet, very slice of life, um, and it's another one of those series. It's kind of like Ruby Dixon, the first. But don't don't tell people it's sweet and and all that if it if it's spicy, because because you you might give people the wrong idea. It's not incredibly spicy, actually. It's one of the it's it's one of those that you 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 actually might like it. They don't have. They don't have the faded mate uh, theme. That's good. They create mate bonds, but only through um, familiarity. So there's usually maybe one to two spicy scenes in the books. Um, so, no, they're not overly spicy, but when I say sweet, I mean there's not darkness around every corner. People aren't getting dragged off into the in, into the depths of, this, of a space station and sent to a pleasure planet or something. I, I mean... Albert. Really? I'm, I mean, they're, they're, they're building up a true relationship, a true loving relationship, these characters are. Um, and it's very, based, very, very heavily based on the romance and not the, uh, the horror, horror and, and terrible things that uh, occur in the universe. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, but again, it's another, another series kind of like Ruby Dixon in that the first books, Albert, are you actively dying over there? They're, we're we're shut up in the office, so they 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 can look out of the of the uh, yeah, room and see all they, the things that are happening without them. They can't be in the room with Becky's mother right now. Becky's mother broke her arm. Yeah, my mother fell yesterday, and she she broke her nose and her broke arm. her nose and her arm, and oh, yeah, Lord, it was a rough day. Yeah. Um, I started this sentence like three times. <laughs> I mean, Ruby Dixon. Yeah, it's it's very they're very much like Ruby, Ruby Dixon. That the first couple of books are based just they're they're slight lightly science fiction in in which the science is is just it sort of takes a back seat. But yeah. as the series goes, the science fiction and the world building gets more and more dense and richer and richer. And that's how these books are. Um, the longer the series goes the more culture we see and the more the more science fiction and the more the the, the the universe expands. And I like that a lot. It makes me happy. So these are really good for anybody who's interested in, in getting into the science fiction romance genre. Because they're they're awesome. Alright. So I'm gonna show you the least cozy thing I've read in a long time. Okay. Um, um I, I just finished Frankenstein again. For the, uh, as a third read of it and I read the 1831 version this time and loved it it was freaking great what, what an amazing book but I'm not talking about that I'm talking <laughs> about this one right here it's Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children um, this is his 1981 novel his, the sec his second novel um, and he won the Booker Prize 
the uh, which is, which I mean these days it may not be as big a deal as it once was but in 1981 the Booker Prize was huge you know um, they actually did try to choose the best book the best book in existence you know for that year whereas I'm not sure they do that anymore yeah um, yeah but um, maybe not the Salman Rushdie, if you haven't read him, this is my first read of Salman Rushdie, and I'm glad I started here. Um, I think this is an amazing place to start with Salman Rushdie if you haven't read him. The thing with this book, well, and the thing with Salman Rushdie, Salman Rushdie has has a rhythm, and Salman Rushdie has a cadence with his writing that is completely different from anything else I've ever read, from any other author I have ever read. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's there's nothing cozy about this book whatsoever. You have to constantly be watching. Yeah, you have to constantly be watching, you have to constantly be um, thinking about what you're reading. You're getting history, you're getting a, a great sense of humor. Simon Rusty has an, um, writes with an amazing sense of humor in this book. Um, the characters are funny, they're well thought out, they are weird. This is one of the strangest books I've read in a long time. But it's also, um, it, it's also just great. Um, th this may end up being the best thing I've read so far this year. I think, I think it's easily going to be, going to be the, the best thing I've read so far. We'll, we'll see if it holds up. This book actually won the 1993 Booker of Bookers. Um, this is considered the best book that uh, has ever won has ever won a Booker Prize. So that's awesome. I, I can't argue with it because I haven't read a lot of Booker Prize winners, but I think this is I, I highly highly recommend this to someone that's looking for something a little more in depth. Um, it you know a little more historic. It's got a lot of uh, Indian and Pakistani history in it. Um, starts in the 1940s and works its way forward into the 80s or into the late 70s. Does it go into any world uh, history? Like, if it starts in the 40s, is the World War II happening? Is yeah, there's there's some of, there's some of that, but there's not a lot, not a okay. lot at all. Um, it's awesome. It is, it is such a great book, and I do highly recommend it to some people but I don't recommend it to everybody I recommend it to people who um, are just looking for something a little a, a little less cozy and a little more um, Boys. experimental take or, a powder yeah the dogs are going nuts over there I don't know if you can hear them or not they just feed off of each other and it's worse, worse but let me, let me show you my, my bookmark I'm using for this book I'm almost finished. I have like 40 pages left, but Becky made me this. Was it Christmas last year? Yes. Yeah, Christmas last year. And she made me these, these felt bookmarks. I, I just love these things. She made the tassels. That is so many French knots. Yeah. <laughs> and this one I think took her a little while. But yeah, I love this. And I have quite a few of these. I have, I have um, other ones that actually fit... This Becky made me on the edges of the pages. Like they, fit, this. they fit. They're they're triangular shaped. Yeah, they're they triangular the shaped. They fit on the corners, and that would and, and you you know where you are there. But um, again, Midnight's Children is the one I'm going to recommend this week. Right. So yeah, this is awesome. So uh, get on get on this if if you've been putting it off, read it this year. Then let me know what you think, or let me know what you think if you have read it. This cover drives me insane. I've been thinking that there's a fold in this cover. Yep. There like isn't. The entire time you've been reading notes. There isn't. That's part of the cover. I don't, I don't like this cover. Um, I would actually rather have the uh, the U.S. version of this. Um, but, I mean, this is okay. This is a vintage, uh, vin the vintage copy. I've shown this on here before. You will not but, expire. Um, yeah, I will have this finished tonight. So, I'm very excited to get this what? read. And, a, and, I, and I'm reading a Robert Silverberg book now that I'll talk about next week. But, yeah, good book. Yeah. Great book, actually. One of, one of the greats, maybe. It's, it's widely considered to be Salman Rushdie's best novel. But, yeah, I think that's it. Are you going to read The Satanic Verses? 
Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna read that later this year. Nice. Yep. Um, the Satanic Verses, I want to read Victory City. I'd like to get both of those read this year. Victory City? Yeah, Sal Salman Rushdie's late, latest, latest book. Okay. He, I guess he wrote it after he was attacked and stabbed. Or maybe he started it before, but he finished yeah. it afterward. Salman Rushdie's the guy who, who fought what was put on him for writing yeah. the Satanic Verses. It's been called off, but... Yeah, it, it was called off before he was ever attacked, supposedly. Poor guy lived in fear for like 20, what, 20, 25 30 years? 25 years. Lord. Yeah. I can't imagine. It, yeah, until it finally happened. Actually, maybe it's 30 years, 35 years. Something like that. It was, it was a ridiculous amount of time. But anyway. Anyway, we're done. Um, it? Yeah, we uh, just wanted to talk about... Uh, the Chrysalids and the two books that we recommended. It's been so. a good month of reading. It has been a good yeah. month. Yeah, even, even though I've spent a good part of my time on this one, this is not a quick read. <laughs> but uh, it's been great. And, yeah. and I've, I've been reading it with Alan from uh, Big Hard Books and Classics, and he finished it before I did. He finished it yesterday or the day before. Yeah, I've been abusing my Kindle Unlimited as usual. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, we will talk to you soon, BookTube. Uh, sorry it took so long to get another video out. Your books are calling. Go read.